Hello and welcome to Adelaide, South Australia. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I'll be catching the Great Southern Train from Adelaide to Brisbane. I'll be spending Christmas Eve in Victoria, Christmas Day in Canberra, and the Boxing Day in New South Wales. They say it's gonna be a Christmas like no other. So let's go and see what this festive three-day journey is like. If you are new to my channel or have yet to watch my GAN train video, I would suggest you to watch that video first. It covers detailed information about Adelaide's two major railway stations, the rail company Journey Beyond and different cabin options on the train, especially the Platinum Cabin. Adelaide Parklands Terminal was originally built by Australian National for its long-haul passenger rail services. Today it's owned by a private company called Journey Beyond. Using many of the former Commonwealth Railway's stainless steel carriages, Journey Beyond operates three luxurious experiential tourism trains, namely the GAN between Adelaide and Darwin, the Indian Pacific between Sydney and Perth via Adelaide, and the Great Southern between Adelaide and Brisbane. It also operates a commuting train called the Overland, the train subsidised by the Victorian state government and runs between Adelaide and Melbourne. Compared to the Overland, the GAN and the Indian Pacific, which first operated in 1887, 1929 and 1970, the Great Southern is a very new service. The inaugural journey departed Adelaide on the 6th of December 2019. The burnt orange diesel locomotives are inspired by the hues of the East Coast sunsets witnessed on the train. Same as again, the Great Southern is not a year-round service. The GAN does not operate in December and January because the rail track usually gets flooded in the Northern Territory. During these months, Journey Beyond uses the GAN's rolling stock to operate the Great Southern to the southeast corner of Australia where summer is usually dry and sunny. In the 2021 season, Journey Beyond organised two special Great Southern departures. One departs Adelaide on Christmas Eve and arrives in Brisbane on Boxing Day. The other departs Adelaide on New Year's Eve and arrives in Brisbane on the 2nd of January. I picked the Christmas Eve departure because, as a foodie, I could not resist the sumptuous feast at the Hyatt Hotel Canberra on Christmas Day. And I don't want to miss out the New Year fireworks in Brisbane. Of course, my girlfriend wasn't very happy with my decision here, she wanted me to spend time with the family. I truly appreciate her understanding in the end. The average length of the Great Southern is 711 meters. This includes passenger carriages, crew carriages, lounge cars, a luggage van and two power vans. There are two levels of service offered on the train, platinum and gold service. As I have already experienced Platinum service on the GAN, I decided to save some money and travel in Gold service this time. Platinum guests are entitled to a complimentary private pickup from pretty much anywhere within Greater Adelaide. For me, I had to make my own way to the terminal. Check-in opens approximately 3 hours before departure. Platinum guests have a dedicated check-in line, but from my experience, the gold service line usually isn't very long either. Each Platinum passenger can check in three pieces of luggage, each weighing no more than 30 kilos, and gold passengers can check in two. They will be stored in the luggage van. After checking in, you are free to relax at the terminal, visit the gift shop or take selfies with the train on the platform. The gift shop has a wide range of Indian Pacific and GAN merchandise, however, to my surprise, I couldn't find anything for the Great Southern. While waiting to board the train, the staff offer all passengers complimentary tea, coffee and sparkling wine. Thank you. So that's croissant and... Uh, uh, croissant and a spinach and ricotta roll. Hello. Do you like a yogurt and granola at all? Yes, please. No worries, mate. Thank you. Well. As it's only 7.30 in the morning, there's a free flow of pastries and yogurt as well. I have to say, I really love this fruity yogurt. The Great Southern has the same cabin types as again in the Indian Pacific. Gold service cabins include Gold Single, Gold Access, Gold Twin and Gold Superior and Platinum service cabins include Platinum Double and Platinum Twin. 
Gold Single is the cheapest cabin to travel in. It has a single seat which converts to a single bed at night. There are two showers and four toilets in each Gold Single carriage, shared among 16 Gold Single passengers. Gold Twin is the most popular cabin on the train. The three-seater lounge converts to an upper and lower sleeping berth at night, and each cabin has a compact ensuite with a toilet and shower. Gold Access is the accessible version of Gold Twin. The two seats can be converted to two single beds at night, and the accessible ensuite bathroom has handrails and a flexible hand shower. To book this cabin, you have to contact the reservation center. The Gold Superior Cabin is about twice the size of a Gold Twin Cabin. It features a three-quarter size double bed plus an additional fold-down upper berth, lounge area, TV and DVD player, mini bar and a less compact ensuite. Platinum Double and Platinum Twin are the most luxurious cabins on a regular train service in Australia. By day, each cabin is configured as a private lounge with deluxe seating and a table. By night, the seats convert to a double bed or two single beds. Once again, if you would like to know more about the Platinum service, please check out my GAN video. All Gold Service passengers have access to the Outback Explorer Lounge. It has a TV screen showing the route map and the train's live location. The lounge is the social hub of the train. There are plenty of lounge chairs and the carriage is equipped with a bar and a souvenir corner. I'm glad to see that some great southern merchandise are displayed here. The lounge is open from breakfast to late evening. You can enjoy all-inclusive Australian wines, beers, soft drinks and standard spirits, and the staff are trained to make barista-style coffees. Next to the lounge car is the Queen Adelaide restaurant. This classically styled dining carriage is where gold service passengers enjoy all-inclusive meals prepared by onboard chefs using fresh local ingredients. Platinum passengers have a dedicated lounge car called the Platinum Club Lounge. Because the passenger numbers in each Platinum carriage are way fewer than gold, the Platinum Club is a combined lounge and dining car which half the carriage features a bar, leather seating and timber flooring, and the other half is placed with dining tables. Although theoretically, Platinum passengers can also relax at the Outback Explorer Lounge, being separated by Queen Adelaide Restaurant and the kitchen, the staff don't really introduce the Outback Explorer Lounge to those travelling in Platinum. The locomotives used to haul the Great Southern are two Pacific National NR-class locomotives, NR30 and NR31. The NR-class is one of the most successful diesel locomotives in Australia today. With a top operating speed of 115 km per hour, they are quiet, reliable and very popular. The GAN and the Indian Pacific are hauled by the NR Class 2. Boarding commenced approximately one hour before departure. A number of the staff helped carry some passengers' bags into their cabins. Having already travelled in Platinum, the purpose of this video is to showcase the activities and the off-train experiences during this unique Christmas Great Southern journey. Therefore, I only booked a gold single cabin to save myself some money. Yeah, Rory. Yeah, yeah. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you on right hand side. At the rear of each passenger carriage, there's a self-service tea and coffee station available 24 hours a day. The gold single carriage is in a 1-1 configuration with a corridor in the middle. Each side has 8 compact sleeper cabins. Cabin number 5 will be my home for the next 2 nights. Coming 
Adelaide Parklands Terminal is the terminus of the Adelaide Port Augusta railway line that connects Adelaide with Darwin and Perth, as well as the Adelaide Woolsey railway line, which is the South Australian section of the Melbourne Adelaide Rail Corridor. Later this evening, the Great Southern will travel through the suburbs of Melbourne. So, which line are we using now? The line between Adelaide and Melbourne was originally built as broad gauge. In 1995, the track was converted to standard gauge as part of the federal Labor government's One Nation project, which aimed to connect all mainland state capitals by one standardized rail gauge. This project has enabled us to travel from Adelaide to Brisbane without changing trains in Victoria. Blair is the current terminus of Adelaide Metro's Blair Line. After Blair, we will travel through Adelaide Hills. This region features some of South Australia's best-known wildlife, conservation parks and wines. It's acclaimed for cool climate classics such as Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Gold single cabin is very compact, but on the other hand it is well designed, modern and has everything I need. During the day, the cabin features a seat with a foldable side table and a bench. There's an armrest on both sides of the seat. Next to the seat, there's a small wardrobe with two coat hangers and even a hair dryer. Though I think you would probably wake everyone up if you use it in your cabin in the morning. The two power points are within easy reach from the seat, and below them are two storage units. There's more storage space below the bench and under the seat. While the toilet is shared, each gold single cabin has a wash basin with a mirror, towels, an amenity kit and a bin. When the door is closed, the cabin feels private and cosy. It's not as cramped as it may look. Above the wash basin, there's space to put a carry-on suitcase. Masks are not required when you are in your cabin. I was too focused on filming, so I forgot to take it off. The staff controls the air conditioning for each carriage, so you can't adjust the temperature yourself. There's a control panel for the music in your cabin. There are six channels, but only four of them are active. Channel 1 is easy listening music. Channel 2 is classic cruise. Channel 3 is classical music. And channel 4 is jazz and blues. There are two toilets at one end of the carriage and two toilets with shower at the other. Like I mentioned in all my other videos, despite being shared, the shower is much more spacious than in Gold Twin and Gold Superior cabins. The Outback Explorer Lounge is where I spend most of my time during the day. The lounge has been fitted with Christmas decorations to add festivity to this carriage. From the bar you can order unlimited or inclusive beverages from the train staff. In gold there are 8 types of Australian red wines, 6 types of white wines, 2 sparkling wines and different beers, dessert wines and spirits. The wine list in Platinum Club is primarily similar to gold. There are a few more premium options such as this French Champagne in Platinum. I'm not a massive wine person, therefore I'm already quite happy with the options in gold servers. Murray Bridge is around 97 kilometers east of Adelaide by rail. Formerly known as Edwards Crossing, it was renamed Murray Bridge in 1924, deriving its name from this rail bridge we are travelling on. On the left of the rail bridge is Murray River Road Bridge. Constructed in 1879, it was the first bridge to cross Murray River and enabled railway linkage between Adelaide and Melbourne. Not long after we pass Murray Bridge, it's time for the first meal on board the Great Southern. 
For gold service passengers, each person is allocated a time for each meal. You can choose to have an early or a late one. For this lunch, I could choose to have it at 11.30 or 1 p.m. As a gold single passenger, I have to share a table with other people. This is an excellent opportunity to make friends. There are three courses for this lunch. If you have any special dietary requirements, you should contact the reservation center when you book the ticket. There's always a vegetarian option for each course. Inclusive of the entree is bread with butter. Look how perfect the bread looks. Grilled kangaroo one is definitely the signature entree on Journey Beyond Trains. I've had this dish on both the Indian Pacific and again. But this time, it seems that they've changed the recipe. Instead of sweet corn puree and rosella flour chutney, they used beetroot squadalia and horseradish cream. It now has a more sour flavor profile rather than being slightly sweet. The meat was cooked to medium instead of medium rare. I actually prefer the old recipe, but it still tastes good. For the main, I picked Malawai fillet. The dish is perfectly presented. There is so much going on. Malawai has firm white flesh with little bones. Together with barramundi, they are two of my favorite types of fish to eat and cook. The pearl couscous has fully absorbed the flavor of the mild cauliflower sauce. This is a delicious and high quality dish and is definitely one of the top three best main dishes I've had on Journey Beyond Trains. For most of the section between Talon Bend and Border Town, the track is parallel to A8 Dukes Highway, the major road connecting Adelaide with Melbourne. For those who don't like fish, I also tried the grilled Murray Bridge pork one. The pork was cooked nicely, it was tender. To avoid it from being dry, the chef added a few drizzles of cider jus on top and left a few fat on the meat. The dish is well balanced. There's plenty of finely chopped kohlrabi slaw, mashed potato and steamed broccoli to keep your diet healthy. <laughs> to finish, I picked the ice cream. Border Town is the last major town before we cross into Victoria. It's about 20 kilometers from the state border. Woosley is the last station on the South Australian side of the border. From the remains of the disused station, you can see that it had three platforms. Woosley used to be a junction station for Adelaide Woosley and Mount Gambier railway line. When the Melbourne to Adelaide rail corridor was converted to standard gauge, the line to Mount Gambia was not converted, so it was closed in 1995. Six kilometers east of Woosley Station in the South Australia and Victoria border. Serviceton is the terminus of the Adelaide Woosley line. It's located 1.8 kilometers from the border. From here on, we are traveling on Victoria's Western Standard Gauge Railway line. After a lengthy 90-minute lunch, I finally got time to return to my little cabin and relax for a little. Unlike any other jurisdiction in Australia, Victoria is a state that has its population spread across the state. There aren't any major towns between Talon Bend and Border Town in South Australia, but soon after Serviceton, there are towns like Neil, Dimbula, Horsham and Store. And these stations are still served by the overland train twice a week. Our first off-train excursion is to visit Grampians National Park. It's already visible in the distance. Situated between Horsham and Store, the majestic mountain range rising out of the flat farmland in western Victoria is home to a vast array of native plants and animals, a heaven for food and wine lovers, and has a rich and continuing Aboriginal history. The train will drop us off in Store, then we will have three excursion options. The first option, view for miles, will take you to two cliffside viewing platforms where you can enjoy panoramic views over the town of Horse Gap. 
Venus Bath Walk is a 2.5-kilometer family-friendly walk that takes you from Horse Gap Botanic Gardens along Stony Creek to the natural rock pools at Venus Bath. This little oasis is one of the top must-see attractions of Grampians. The last option is to visit Seaport Winery. You will enjoy a private wine tasting followed by a tour of the property's underground tunnels and cellars. Of these three options, I'm happy to do any of them. I'd like to show you the stunning views of the Grampians, therefore I decided to join the View for Miles tour. The stopover in store will be three and a half hours long. We won't be able to have dinner until at least 7.45. The staff prepared some refreshments at the Outback Explorer Lounge at 3.30. If you don't wish to participate in any of the excursion, you won't be able to remain on the train, but you are allowed to be on your own in store. The staff will tell you the time to get back to the station. A5, Rory Dean. You're in A5, thank yeah. you. When we arrived, the coaches were already waiting outside the station. Both gold and platinum passengers are treated the same during the off-train excursions, which means they share the same bus with us. Store is located 240 kilometers west of Melbourne. It was founded in 1853 during the Victorian Gold Rush. It is one of the few towns in Victoria that still retains an active gold mining industry. Store is also the closest major town to the Grampians National Park. A 35-minute coach drive will take us deep into the mountains. <laughs> Nestled next to the scenic woodlands and with the bordering hillsides, Baroka Lookout is one of the best viewpoints to enjoy the gorgeous panoramas of the Grampians region. The lookout consists of two viewing platforms, both are only 100 meters from the car park, and a short walk is suitable for those with limited mobility. Both viewing platforms offer similar views. You can see Flying Birds, Horse Gap, Lake Belfield, Wonderland Range, Mount William Range, Fines Valley, and the plains beyond the Grampians to the east. Unfortunately, Melbourne is still too far away for us to see it from here. Our second stop is Lake Belfield. It's a lake that we saw at the lookout. On the way to the lake, we drove past Horse Gap. Horse Gap is situated at the heart of the Grampians. This small village provides various accommodation options for those wishing to use Horse Gap as a base to access the many hikes, lookouts and waterfalls. To be honest, three hours is not enough to truly experience what this area has to offer. The Grampians is also home to one of the largest waterfalls in Victoria, Mackenzie Falls. Flowing year-round, the force sees water cascade over huge cliffs into a deep pool, sending fine sprays of rainbow mist high into the air above a stunning gorge. Mackenzie Falls car park is a 15-minute drive from store. You will need to walk 1km each way and track down 260 narrow steps to reach the base of the force. Therefore, I can understand why Journey Beyond didn't include Mackenzie Falls in its two options, but it's definitely worth a visit when you are here. Anyway, this is Lake Belfield, located 5 km from Horse Gap. This popular tourist spot provides stunning views of the surrounding mountains and reflective waters. The lake serves as a local water supply and is used for recreational activities such as swimming, kayaking, fishing and picnicking. The 800 meter long dam wall is a fabulous place for an after-dinner walk. Oh, where is our train? The Melbourne to Adelaide Rail Corridor is a busy route for freight trains, and the passing loop at Store Station is not long enough to accommodate the train. 
As a result, the Great Southern had to backtrack to the nearest usable passing loop and only come back to the station when everyone's ready for boarding. Dinner was served as soon as we departed store. Only offering two courses in gold, it feels a bit light to me. Chicken breast can be very dry and become bland if it isn't seasoned properly. The salt bush daka coating has a touch of the Australian outback and adds a layer of nutty and savoury flavour to the chicken. The soba noodles also have an earthy, somewhat nutty flavour, and the sesame dressing on the noodles has kept the chicken moist. It was quite a lovely dish. The Serviston to Ararat section of the Western Standard Gauge Railway Line is also part of the Serviston Railway Line. Before the gauge conversion, this broad gauge line connected Melbourne with Serviston via Ballarat. Today, only Melbourne to Ararat section remains broad gauge. After Ararat, the Western Standard Gauge Line detours south towards North Shore Geelong before heading east to Melbourne. Therefore, from Ararat to Melbourne, the travel time for the V-Line's broad gauge velocity is around 2 hours and 34 minutes, but for the Standard Gauge Overland train is 3 hours and 31 minutes. For dessert, I decided to try the warm pear and ginger pudding. Overall, this is the lightest dinner I've had on Journey Beyond Trains. But to be fair, everyone started dinner at 7.45. It was already 9 when I finished my dessert. Having too much food before bed wouldn't be a good idea. When I returned to my cabin, the staff have already made my bed. As you can see, I'm still able to access the drawer under the seat and the space under the bench. A pair of slippers are provided in Gold Single Cabin. Since I didn't get them when travelling in Platinum, I guess they are for me to wear when using the bathroom at night. There's also a dark chocolate to help me fall asleep. The single bed is pretty narrow, but the mattress is comfy. There are two pillows, one is firm and the other is soft. Once again, it's a compact cabin, but I find it sufficient enough for me to have a good night of sleep. Tomorrow is going to be an exciting but a long day. I decided to go to bed early to give myself enough rest. Good night! As you can hear, Australian trains are noisy and they can be much bumpier than a plane. So, like I always mention, if you are a light sleeper, you may not be able to sleep well on night trains in Australia. Good morning and Merry Christmas! Breakfast won't be served until 7 o'clock, however, I'm a morning person and I would like to be the first one to use the shower, so I got up early. The toilet is still clean and tidy after a night of travel. Each carriage stores 3,000 litres of water and the train replenishes its water supply at various locations along the journey. There's no water restriction on board. The shower is big, hot and the water pressure is consistent. After shower, you can put your dirty towel in the linen bag. The staff restocks the towels in your cabin daily. We were almost at North Shore Geelong when I went to bed. The train then travelled through the western and northern suburbs of Melbourne, Seymour, Wodonga, then across the Victorian border to Aubrey in New South Wales, and we are now in Wagga Wagga. <laughs>
Breakfast is served between seven and nine. You can go to the Queen Adelaide restaurant at any time during this period. A variety of jams, veggie mite, and butter have already been set up on the table. For breakfast and lunch, gold and platinum servers have the same menu. For a full dinner service, platinum passengers get an extra appetizer before entree and main. To start, I had the yoga buffet. Davidson plums are known as one of the best native plums. The deep dark purple fruit contains a soft juicy pulp with a sharp acidity. They are typically grown in New South Wales and Queensland. This signifies that Jenny Beyond uses fresh local ingredients to cook its meals. The wood-fired artisan toast is warm and crunchy. I loved it. Shake shuka is a classic North African and Middle Eastern dish made of gently poached eggs in a delicious chunky tomato and bell pepper sauce. On the Great Southern, the chefs added bacon and baby spinach, topped with cheese and crème fraîche, which means sour cream, adding a slightly sour taste to the dish. We will spend most of the day in Canberra today. Yarst is the closest town from Canberra on the railway line between Melbourne and Sydney. We will get off in Yarst and catch the coach to Canberra. Does Canberra have a train station? It does. However, the line to Canberra branches off in Goulburn. It takes an hour and ten minutes for the train to travel from Yarst to Goulburn, then another ninety minutes from Goulburn to Canberra, whereas Yarst to Canberra by coach only takes sixty minutes. Yas Junction is served by two daily New South Wales XPT operating in each direction between Sydney and Melbourne, and a twice weekly New South Wales Explorer service between Sydney and Griffith. The station is located a few kilometres outside the town of Yas. You can see there's another railway track at the front of the station. This was used by a tramway built to convey passengers to Yas Town Centre. The line was opened in 1892 and closed in 1988. Both Yas and Goulburn are around 60 minutes from Canberra by coach, and Goulburn is closer to Sydney than Yas. Therefore, the Great Southern is travelling to Goulburn and will wait for us there. In case you don't already know, Canberra is the capital of Australia. It's the largest inland city in the nation and the eighth largest city overall. It is located at the northern end of the Australian Capital Territory. It's not part of New South Wales. On normal days, the excursion options in Canberra include a generous lunch at the Parliament House. Then you can choose to visit the Australian War Memorial, the Old Parliament House and National Portrait Gallery, or stay at the Parliament House for an extended back of house immersive tour. However, as today is Christmas Day, none of the four institutions are open. Our excursion in Canberra was changed to a one-hour coach tour of the city, then enjoy stunning views across Canberra at Mount Ainslie Lookout, and finally a Christmas feast at Hyde Hotel Canberra. This is Northbourne Avenue, a north-south running road that connects Federal Highway to the north with Canberra City to the south. The large median strip contains a light rail line that travels between the city and the northern town centre of Gungahlin. In this one-hour coach tour, the driver did a fantastic job covering most of Canberra's major landmarks. The international flag display at Commonwealth Place colourfully acknowledges the international presence in the national capital. It now flies 110 flags, representing 108 missions that have a diplomatic presence in Canberra, as well as the flag of the European Union and the United Nations. Was open on the 9th of May, 1927, by the Duke. Duchess of York. It was the home of Parliament for 61 years and 17 Prime Ministers served the nations. 
Council of the Nation under its roof until the new Parliament House opened in 1988. And there we go, there's the new Parliament House for you right there. Symbolises out the front, the water and the Aboriginal display. Symbolises the start, the middle and out the back is the present day Australia. Before heading up to Mount Ainsley, the driver drove past many of the embassies located in Yarralongla. Mount Ainsley is a small hill located only a 10 minute drive from the city. Its proximate location and excellent views of central Canberra have made it a popular outlook for both tourists and locals. The staff have set up a temporary drink station to keep us hydrated while enjoying the scenery. Now it's finally time to have lunch. If watching the sunrise in Mala was a highlight of my gain trip, then the feast at Hyatt is definitely the most exciting part of the Great Southern. I cannot wait any longer. Hyatt Hotel Canberra is a five-star heritage hotel that interweaves the hidden mystique of the 1920s with modern art deco designs. The traditional furniture styles as well as garden and park views are all enchanted with sleek technology. Journey Beyond reserved a function room for all passengers to enjoy a private buffet. This has to be the most expensive buffet I've ever seen. The seafood are definitely the most valuable items on the menu. Other options include salads, sushis, and there are hot dishes such as lamb shanks, duck fat roast potatoes, chicken and fried rice. Then there's a roast station with different meat and sauce that you can choose from. For dessert, there's a range of cakes, chocolate, fruit and ice cream. I checked on Hyatt Hotel's website. The two-hour Christmas-themed lunch buffet, including one glass of wine, costs $290 per adult and $145 per child. As a seafood lover, I'm pleased with all the fresh, top-quality ingredients they offer. But if you don't like seafood, I think the hot dishes and desserts are a bit ordinary. Overall, this lunch buffet has met my expectations and everyone seems to have had a great time as well. After lunch, the driver drove us to Goulburn to reunite us with the Great Southern. Goulburn Station is located around 225 kilometers from Sydney Central. It's the terminus of New South Wales Trainlink's intercity Southern Highlands Line, meaning Goulburn is the southwestern boundary of Sydney's Opal Card network. 
Goulburn used to be a major railway centre with a roundhouse, engine servicing facilities, and a factory that made prefabricated concrete components for signal boxes and station buildings. Today, the station is served by the Southern Highlands Line to Sydney, Campbelltown, and Mossvale, as well as the New South Wales XPT and Explorer trains to Canberra, Griffith, Sydney, and Melbourne. Here comes our Great Southern. What's your favourite journey beyond locomotive livery? I have to say I really like the colour of the GAN, but the Great Southern has to be my second favourite. This orange colour matches well with the colour of the brick station buildings across New South Wales. Welcome back on board! Even though I spent most of my time on the coach, it still felt like a long day. We disembarked in Yas not long after breakfast, and it's now almost time for dinner. The staff have put a personalised Seedon's greeting card and a Great Southern themed cookie in everyone's cabin. The Outback Explorer Lounge is a great place to socialise and enjoy a glass of wine. Along with the Platinum Club, they are the only carriages on this train that offer free Wi-Fi. The usage is limited to 500 megabits per day. I was able to refresh and upload a story on my Instagram. Dinner commenced at 6.30. For this Christmas Day dinner, the chefs have prepared a special three-course menu for gold service passengers. To start is an olive herb cherry tomato canapé. Like many other parts of the world, in Australia, no Christmas dinner is complete without having some ham. The process of double smoking the ham has removed some of the wetness in the meat. This doesn't mean the ham is dry, it's still moist, it's just not overly wet. The extra time in the smoker also gives the meat extra smokiness and richness. For me, the other highlight of this entree is the herbs. They look like the colour of the Christmas tree, and they certainly added a pleasant scent of the Christmas tree to the dish. Absolutely lovely. Roast turkey is another popular meat choice for a traditional Christmas dinner. However, I decided to try the lamb rum for the main course because I don't like the turkey's bland taste. No offence to turkey lovers here. I think I've also had this lamb rump dish on the GAN. Many people commented on how raw the lamb looked in my video. I'm not a fan of eating raw meat either, but I can confirm that although the meat still looks red in the centre, I didn't find it uncomfortable to eat, and the medium rare lamb tasted very juicy and tender. The minted pea puree got rid of the lamb's gamey flavour and left a refreshing taste in my mouth. Each main course also comes with a side of green leaf salad. Ok, what's next? The dessert. I know I should pick Christmas pudding for Christmas dinner, but I was very interested in the poached peaches, so voila. I can't tell whether the peaches are fresh or canned, but I guess they are fresh. This is a pretty basic dessert, but I still enjoyed it. I mean, what could go wrong with ice cream? Back in my cabin, the bed has been made. There's a feedback form on my bed too. Well, thank you for reminding me that this is my last night on the Great Southern already. Time has passed so quickly. This is MacArthur Station, the terminus of Sydney Trains T8 line. Welcome to Sydney! 
However, we won't stop in Sydney, nor would we travel through Central Station or across the iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge. Instead, we will be using the most direct route towards Coffs Harbour, which is going via North Strathfield, Epping, Hornsby, then the Central Coast. Since there's nothing exciting happening outside the window, it's time for me to go to sleep. I had an enjoyable Christmas. Thank you for still watching this video. Good morning. While I was asleep, we travelled on New South Wales Main North Line to Maitland, then onto the North Coast Railway Line towards Coffs Harbour. We just passed Campsey in the Mid North Coast region. Oh, that's a New South Wales XPT Grafton to Sydney service. Breakfast is again served from 7 to 9. There are two courses. I really love the blood orange marmalade. It has a distinct sweet flavour with a hint of raspberry. It's a perfect match with the Bercher muesli. Accompanying the main course is some wood-fired artisan toasts. They are the same as the ones I had yesterday. This is what the full breakfast looks like. You can choose to have your eggs scrambled, fried or poached. I'm not sure what happened to one of my eggs here. The ingredients were fresh and the portion was okay. I only wish they could add some hash browns or mushrooms in it. I'm a big fan of mushrooms. Our last off-train excursion will take place in Coffs Harbour. There are four options here. First is the Yuronga Boardwalk. Yuronga is not in Coffs Harbour, it's a small town located 28 kilometers south of Coffs. If you pick this option, the Great Southern will drop you off at Yuronga Station, and then a coach will drive you to the boardwalk. The 2 km walk offers stunning views of the rivers and the sea. After that, you'll have a chance to learn the rich cultural history of the traditional owners of this land, the Gumbangye people. Coffs Harbour Explorer is a coach tour. The driver will take you to a viewing platform that offers magnificent coastal views over the city. You will then visit the Botanic Gardens located in the centre of the town. The third option is a guided bike tour alongside the Coffs River. And the last option is a 20-minute helicopter ride in which you'll enjoy a bird's eye view of the region. All four options sound exciting. The first three options are included in your ticket, but the helicopter ride costs an additional $260 per person. Coffs Harbour is a historic fruit growing centre in New South Wales. It has also been a cherished holiday destination within the state. The city has sandy beaches, amusement parks, and is surrounded by national parks. Coffs Harbour Station is served by northbound XPT services to Grafton, Casino and Brisbane, as well as three southbound services to Sydney. For the off-train excursion, I picked Coffs Harbour Explorer because I'm interested in the lookout. This coach is pretty luxurious by Australian standard. It has a toilet, USB charging ports and decent legroom. The seat on Murray's coach in Canberra feels a little bit cramped. After leaving the station, we drove on A1 Pacific Highway for a few kilometres. This highway is a major transport route that connects Sydney with Brisbane. Only a 10 minute drive from Coffs Harbour, Sealy Lookout sits within a flora reserve in Arara East State Forest. Built by Coffs Harbour Lions Club in 1967, the original lookout was even visited by Queen Elizabeth in 1970. In 2011, a new viewing platform called the Forest Sky Pier was constructed. 
The structure extends almost 22 meters out over the rainforest and 15 meters above the forest canopy. The forest sky pier is fully accessible. There aren't any steps between the car park and the viewing platform. From here, you can see the city, Jetty Beach, Mutton Bird Island Nature Reserve, and my personal favorite, the aircraft movement at Coffs Harbor Airport. Back down in the town, we headed straight to the North Coast Regional Botanic Garden. Located approximately one kilometer from the CBD, the garden covers 20 hectares of land. Before the guided tour started, we were offered some fresh fruit salad and water. <laughs> Opened in 1988, there are a total of 5 kilometers of paths and boardwalks traversing the garden. After the short break, we could either hop on the electric cart or walk with an experienced tour guide. To be honest, I didn't mind hopping on the cart, but as the space is limited, I went for a walk instead. The guide was highly knowledgeable. He stopped in front of every type of plant and helped us understand more about them, where they grow, and the importance of plants in our environment and way of life. This botanic garden is one of the most beautiful gardens I've ever visited. It features a selection of natural forests and mangroves, and if you walk further, there are plantings of rare and endangered Australian species, Australian rainforest species, and exotic plants from other subtropical regions of the world. And don't forget to visit the Japanese garden situated around the lake. Overall, I have thoroughly enjoyed the two attractions I visited in Coffs Harbour, and I think I'll have to come back one day to see all the other attractions this coastal town offers. As soon as we boarded the train, it was time to have the last meal on the Great Southern. The two-course lunch started with a piece of perfect-looking artisan bread. Out of the three main course options, only the swordfish is a hot dish. It again looked very familiar. That's right, I've had it on the Indian Pacific for dinner. I miss this flavor. The fish was fresh and tasty. The curry tasted like Thai green curry. It was still very spicy, but the spice got rid of the fishy taste completely. What I like the most is the sweet aftertaste of this curry. It was perfect for mixing with the rice. For dessert, although there's only one option, it's technically a combination of three mini desserts. Mango parfait, wild berry salsa, caramelized pineapple, lemon myrtle syrup, and coconut sorbet. It's certainly a very fruity dessert. A reminder that we are in the subtropics and only a few hours away from the sunny, sunshine state. This is the best dessert I had on the Great Southern. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can have your attention for a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can have your attention. We have a very special lady on board by the name of Elizabeth who's celebrating her 89th birthday today. Welcome to Grafton. This bridge certainly looks very old. Indeed, 
Grafton Bridge was built in 1932. The upper level of the bridge is a two-lane road linking South Grafton with Grafton CBD, and the lower level is a rail bridge that carries the North Coast Railway line. Before the bridge was built, train carriages were carried by ferries across the river. The opening of this bridge marked the completion of the North Coast Railway line and saw Sydney to Brisbane line become the first standard gauge inter-capital rail link in Australia. The New South Wales and Queensland state border is divided by a mountain range called the Macpherson Range, so extending the line into the Queensland capital was no easy task. After Coogle, the railway line still needs to climb to the summit. Fortunately, a convenient hill nearby allows the line to circle back on itself so that it climbs 30 meters without having to make any forward progress. Two tunnels were also required for this climb. The first is an 192-meter-long concrete tunnel called Kugel Spiral Number One Tunnel, followed by an 177-meter tunnel called Kugel Spiral Number Two Tunnel. We are very close, but we still haven't crossed the state border. 2.3 kilometers after the second tunnel, past the 875-kilometer distance sign, there's another 1,160-meter-long tunnel called the Border Tunnel. The other side of the tunnel is Queensland. Completing the Kugel to Border Loop section of the North Coast Railway was a notable engineering achievement, revealing an early 20th-century engineering solution that allows trains to pass through the steep topography at the border. After crossing into Queensland, Brisbane, Roma Street Station, the terminus of the New South Wales North Coast Line is just 112 kilometers away. The scenery in this region has once again amazed me. This is my fourth time traveling with Journey Beyond. The food, the service, and the experience that they provide have been consistently pleasing. Due to popular demand in the 2022 to 2023 season, in addition to December and January, the Great Southern will operate throughout February as well. If you are traveling alone, Gold Single is definitely good enough for the trip. During the day, from breakfast to dinner, you'll be busy socializing in the lounge car or doing the off-train excursions. So the only time you'll be in your cabin is at night. Gold Single is small, but it does the job. I also didn't find the shared bathroom to be an issue. If you are interested in the Gold Twin Cabin, here's a spoiler alert. I'll be traveling on the Indian Pacific to Perth in the Gold Twin Cabin in a few weeks' time. <laughs> Stay tuned. Journey Beyond Trains have offered me a unique way to travel across Australia, but as you can see, the time allocated for each off-train excursion is very limited. The Grampians, for example, you can have a taste of it, but you won't be able to explore the place fully. So, in my opinion, you should treat the Great Southern as a luxury train experience. If your aim is just to visit the Grampians, Canberra, Coffs Harbour or Brisbane, I think flying or driving would be much cheaper and better. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Sadly, now it's time for me to pack up my bags and get ready for disembarking. Due to the length of the train, the Great Southern does not terminate at Brisbane Roma Street Station, located in the heart of the city. We will get off at Acacia Ridge Freight Terminal. It's a 25-minute drive from the city. Journey Beyond offers all Gold Service guests a complimentary coach transfer to Brisbane CBD with a few drop-off points. If you are travelling on Great Southern from Brisbane to Adelaide, then you will have to make your own way to Hanworth House in East Brisbane. The coaches will depart from there to the rail terminal. For Platinum Service guests, a complimentary private transfer will drop you off or pick you up from anywhere within 60 km of the rail terminal, which should include suburbs as far as Rosewood, Helens Vale and Kabucha. So this is my experience on board the Great Southern over the last Christmas. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you find it interesting, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more train and flight reviews. I booked my girlfriend a flight to Brisbane on the 31st of December so we could watch the New Year fireworks together. 
I have attached the last 30 seconds of the show. It wasn't the best fireworks I've ever seen, but it was still quite magnificent. Thank you again and I'll see you all in my next video.